Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate at St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. Today's Do You Know question is, do you know the backdrop to the September 8th feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary? In order to understand this, it's important to realize that the Gospels have nothing whatsoever, say nothing whatsoever about Mary's parents, Mary's birth, uh, her upbringing, and so on. Uh, when we meet Mary in the Gospels, she's already a young person, a young adult, roughly ages 13 to 14, and she's already betrothed in marriage to Joseph. Uh, we do know, as the devotion to Mary began to grow and develop, uh, we do know that many people became much more interested in Mary's parents, when she was born, what was she like as a child, and so on. And as a result of this fascination with Mary and interest in an early life, uh, uh, several Gospels were written which were never considered canonical or acceptable, uh, into the, uh, were accepted into the Bible. Uh, these were known as apocryphal Gospels, uh, but these were written to provide the details about Mary's early life, uh, her, her parents, her birth, and so on. And the most famous of these apocryphal Gospels is the Infancy Gospel of James, often referred to as the Proto-Evangelium of James. Proto-Evangelium means the events that occurred before the Gospel. Uh, and so in this gospel, which captured the imagination, even though it wasn't part of the, included in the Bible and so on, it captured the imagination of the uh, Christians throughout history. Uh, and it was very popular in artwork, in sermons, in liturgical celebrations and so on, even up to the modern age. Um, uh, and so it's important to go back to the Gospel of James, and the story that is recalled in that Gospel is the fact that Mary's parents, whose names are Anna and Joachim, are old and have no children. Anna is barren, and both of the parents pray to God that they might have a child. And they promise that if they have a child, they will dedicate the child to God in service of God. God grants them a child, a girl, whom they name Mary, in Hebrew, Miriam. And the child, when she's roughly about three years old, or weaned from the breast, is taken to the temple and dedicated to God, where she lives in virginal purity in the temple till she reaches uh, the age of maturity, or puberty, as we would call it today. And it was a time in which she would be, have to be married to someone. And so what the priests do is uh, they invite all the eligible suitors uh, to come to, uh, to seek Mary's hand. And now they have to decide what's the best way to determine whom God has designated as the husband to Mary. And so they have all the suitors place their walking sticks at the foot of the altar and they pray for a sign. Eventually, one of the walk walking sticks flowers into a lily and a dove flies off on the walking stick onto the person whose walking stick it is, and it ends up being Joseph, an older man, a widower who has children by a previous marriage. Uh, reluctantly, he agrees to marry Mary, but not as a husband-lover figure, but rather more as a father, protector, guardian of her virginal purity. Uh, soon Mary receives the message from an angel that she is to be with child and she, is to, uh, she was uh, invited to be and choose to be with child and she accepts and soon Mary is pregnant. Um, all of a sudden the priests realize that Joseph may have violated the, uh, the virgin and the virginal purity of Mary and they accuse both Mary and uh, Joseph of having violated their virginal purity, and uh, both deny it and both move uh, tr trust in God as a way of uh, saying to the priests that no, they'd never violated their, their virginal uh, relationship. Um, 
the story moves on with Mary giving birth, in which the midwife who's helping and assisting in the giving of birth is actually um, surprised that a virgin has given birth and so on. And even the, the, um, the, the uh, uh, midwife questions uh, whether this is actually true or not uh, and so on. Uh, finally, the, uh, the, um, the gospel pretty much ends with the birth of uh, Jesus as well as the final story of Jesus being saved from the persecutions of Herod, who was trying to kill him and John the Baptist at the same time. And that's the end of the gospel. And so throughout the entire gospel, Emphasy Gospel of James, the focus seems to be exclusively on maintaining the virginal purity of both Joseph and Mary in this particular case, and to make sure that um, the, uh, the challenges that were offered to them on their virginal purity, they will overcome both the challenges of the priest and the challenge of the midwife. And so this gospel has become the source for all sorts of devotional relationship or understanding of Mary, her origins, her parents, and so on. And it becomes a source of the feast, and it actually becomes a source of other major feasts in the liturgical year, such as the feasts of Anna and Joachim, and the presentation of Mary in the temple, and so on. So I hope this has helped a bit to understand just the source of the September 8th feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and I hope you'll return again to more Do You Know questions to know more about our traditions, especially our traditions with regards to Mary and Joseph. Thank you very much.